Alright, I guess I'll take a break from the driving and the cycling videos for now and show you what I've been working on for the past couple, well actually really the whole semester, but it really ramped up once uh, once this little circuit board came in and then I assembled it. So this is a controller, the control unit for the tornado simulator exhibit down at the Discovery Space Museum in State College, PA. It's a little children's science museum, you know, interactive stuff. And so this is so we've had we've had to deal with a broken tornado simulator. Uh, my team went in, we diagnosed what was what was wrong with it, found a broken fan, because it used it used a computer fan to move all the air up and uh there's a there's a little smoke smoke machine at the bottom at the bottom of the enclosure to generate some you know smoke and then the fan would just kind of swirl it around a bit. Found that the fan broke, but also just the wiring and there was just a complete clusterfuck. So this is this is our solution to that problem. You know, not only to fix the exhibit, but to also make the wiring more organized. Make everything more, more reliable, stable, easy to understand. We'll, we'll include some documentation to help the Discovery Space people repair the exhibit if needed, or you know, provide some other guidance on how to maintain it. So that's it. So I just assembled. I just assembled all the parts on this board. See so if, if we want to get a little comparison shot here. Uh, I'm trying to get it to the right. Here we go. So this is here's the bare board. Bare board on the left. And you can see it's just it's just circuits. It's just circuitry. Put in a much much more compact profile than a breadboard or even just run or even just like the disorganized wiring that we had before. You know, it's double sided. See, you got some we have a little bit of circuitry on that side as well. And that's for you know like because most of the most of these are through hole components, which means they they have metal uh, leads that protrude through the holes. And then we have one surface mount component right here, I'm pointing not the three holes, but there's like you know two wires, and then it goes out yeah you know, this part right here. The, these two these two little pads that's for a surface mount resistor. And it's surface mount because you mount it on the surface. It doesn't go through the board like the other ones do. All right. So I'll move this back over to the middle here. So yeah, we have. It's not. We only have like one one more item to actually uh, solder on, which is right here, right there. And that's for the that's for the little dial, the potentiometer that we're gonna. I want to have on there. That's really the good, that's really the most user-facing part of all is the, is the little dial. Um, that one we're we're gonna wait to till we actually get to Discovery Space to install the install this board uh, to actually actually do because um, well actually there's that and then there's the you see this this little uh, screw terminal. I wanna that one's gonna connect to the fan and that's one. And then the other one, the, that other one was supposed to be a screw terminal, but for some reason, uh, only one screw terminal got ordered instead of two. There was supposed to be two, but it doesn't really matter as long as, uh, I mean, you can solder and then you can desolder. That's besides the point. So what we've got, obviously, screw terminal, you got two wires, uh, positive and negative, that's going to go to the fan, and, and, uh, and then we've got the dial, potentiometer, to control how fa how fast the fan's going. Uh, surface mount resistor inside. Uh, kind of did a little bit of a sketchy. Like, uh, a little sketch, sketchy soldering job there because it, it's it, it, it's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult to to hand solder, um, to hand solder a surface mount 
components when they're that small, like surface mount resistors, surface mount capacitors, and that kind of form factor. In this case, we have a 1206 or 1216, I forget. One of those two form factors, but they're they're both tiny. They're both uh, they both look like really miniature Hershey bars with the with the wrapping around, not without the wrapping, with the wrapping. Um, so and obviously the, the pads are really small, and if you're using uh, if you're using an iron, a soldering iron with uh, with regular you know you know wire wire kind of solder like this it gets kind of difficult it's like you have to hold one side down and then you gotta put it down and then you do the other side it's it's it can be a mess thankfully this circuit's simple it's yeah, so that made it a bit easier okay let's flip this around uh, is this the best yeah this is the best angle push it up here okay so we've got power power jack right here uh, it'll take uh, 12 to 18 volts. I just tested it with 12 volts right before filming this, and uh, apparently it works just as just as well with 12. Um, so the, the the fan takes up to 12 volts at 0.52 amps, and that's that's going to that will be uh, full full speed, full speed that's rated at. So so we got a voltage regulator. We got a voltage regulator at the LM317. Uh, during when we were still breadboarding it, we were using an ON semiconductor one. Now we are using the Texas Instruments, the original, the original maker after they bought out a national semiconductor, I believe. And then that's uh, and that's on this this part right here. The probably the biggest part you can see for now is the heatsink. And uh, it's a little it's a little bit overkill for. It's a little bit overkill for this exhibit, but um, you know the the part about the voltage regulator it, it regulates the voltage, and and we we want to regulate it from you know almost nothing all the way to twelve, and we want and it has a it, you really should be using it with like a little bit of an upper buffer on your power supply. So if you're if you're trying to regulate up to twelve volts, you should probably use a fifteen volt power supply. Uh, DC obviously, and then that's why you have a resistor, and then you got you know, the, all that other stuff. You can look up the data sheets. So, and so the, the the way it dissipates the excess power is by heat, and this is like this is like the simplest simplest way to do it is to, is to dissipate the excess power, which is voltage times current, as heat. That's why you have a heat sink. Uh, this heatsink, like I said, is a little bit overkill because it's it it doesn't actually dissipate enough power to really you know really work this heatsink. Like it doesn't like we're only dealing with like you know up to maximum of like 12 volts and just over half an amp. So that's like six watts of power, if anything. If like six watts maximum. So this so th this heatsink's a little bit overkill, but again, reliability. All right. Looks like I, I, I'm running out of time here, so I gotta I gotta run over to the uh, discovery space, meet up with my teammates, and then just install this damn thing. All right, later.